webinar for uh, 2015. Uh, what we'd like to do in these webinars is to walk through a high-level overview of how BoyNet works, uh, including the uh, various campaign types, how the creative process unfolds within our template editor, uh, list management, and then uh, spend some time showing the differences between the base product and the agency edition. And uh, along the way, answer any questions that you might have. Uh, this is Dennis Kelly. I'm the CEO of BoyNet. I'm joined by Charles Urbino, who is a business uh, uh, development evangelist here. And uh, Charles will be manning the chat line. And so uh, if you have any questions, you want to uh, use the chat function uh, within Join Me, feel free to do that. So um, uh, when you log into BoyNet after you've uh, built some campaigns and, and templates and uh, uh, been working for a while, you'll see a screen that looks like this. This is what we call our home screen. And it essentially gives you a quick overview of uh, the most recent things you've been working on and some good uh, jumping off points within the software. So this is a graphic of the most recent campaign. This was an email campaign. Uh, over on this side, we've got uh, some quick steps in how to accomplish some key tasks, uh, access to the welcome video, as well as a quick product tour uh, that will walk you through uh, various components of the product. Uh, next is a listing of the uh, campaigns in their most recent uh, in order of their most recent use. Uh, appropriate help articles uh, to access, access to the templates that have been recently edited, and then any account information, whether you've got a pay-as-you-go or a monthly model, you can access everything right there. The majority of navigation in BoyNet is done through the menu up here in the upper right-hand corner. Um, the build menu will give you access to the things that go into building campaigns. Lists are uh, give you access to list management within BoyNet. Campaigns uh, take us into the various campaign types. Reports will take you into the reporting. And the username dropdown has some important components to uh, involving your plan, your account, uh, the uh, full help system is available here. We've got an extensive knowledge base that's been built uh, with videos and articles on how to accomplish certain tasks within BoyNet. A great place to start uh, in understanding how BoyNet works is to jump into the campaign section of the, of the product. So we'll start there today. We currently offer four different campaign types, and these campaigns are all have some basic uh, fundamental characteristics that distinguish them from each other, and those characteristics make those campaigns useful for different types of marketing activities. So uh, we'll start out with lead generation campaigns. What you see here is a list of uh, campaigns uh, broken down by uh, last update date. Uh, you can sort in any of these columns. You can search. Uh, you can uh, jump into reporting right away. You can delete or edit uh, a campaign from this uh, listing. Okay. We're going to jump into an existing campaign called Content Marketing Microsites. And so this campaign is comprised of a few different things, and these are the characteristics of all lead generation campaigns. First of all, uh, for a lead generation campaign, you have a set of creative, in this case, a two-page microsite, uh, and the live campaign that is uh, sitting out there uh, on the web. Uh, and the vast majority of lead generation campaigns are designed to have one or more pages of content that are live on a URL that you designate. And then the pages are designed to capture information about anonymous visitors to that page and then drop that information into a list for further marketing down the road. So. These campaigns take advantage of our page template technology uh, and uh, our ability to take a, a set of, of landing page templates, assign them to various um, mechanisms to describe that 
page for a particular campaign from a technical standpoint, assign them to a URL that makes sense for what you're trying to do, and then manage that page and, and the interaction between the users, the lists, the forms, et cetera. So uh, we'll, next we'll jump into, take a look at that page. This is a, uh, a page that was designed to capture information from people in exchange for watching a video of how to build a microsite. And so we built the page uh, using a specific phrase in the URL, as you can see here, content marketing microsites. That phrase is also being used in the headline. And it is also being used behind the scenes in some of the tags that we've associated with this page. By using that particular phrase, we've optimized this page for a couple of things. Number one, for search engines. By using this particular keyword phrase, we are able to achieve a high ranking when uh, people type this particular uh, keyword phrase into the search engine. And so we've structured the HTML, the background meta tags, and the content of the page to be optimized for this particular keyword. Uh, secondly, we've set it up uh, in particular for this campaign in a Google pay-per-click ad. And by matching the uh, search keyword phrase to the headline, the content, the URL, and the meta tags of the page, we have a lower uh, cost per click in Google because Google says, hey, this is a, this is a very appropriate page for uh, that particular keyword. So BoyNet makes it very easy and fast to construct these pages and then structure those um, really important tags and, and keywords uh, so that you can quickly generate campaigns, assign them to the particular objectives that you're looking for, and then get them out published on the web. So uh, as I mentioned, this page is about microsites. And in order to watch a video of how to build a microsite, I need to fill out a form. I'm just going to fill out this form quickly, watch video. <clears throat> and uh, essentially what's happened is that data that I filled in in the form has been dropped into a list in BoyNet. And we'll talk about what you can do with uh, that information uh, that's been uh, filled out in various forms uh, a little bit later as we proceed through the demo. Next, it's taken us to a thank you page which is the second page of this microsite. And uh, obviously we enable people to watch the video here. This is a video that is being hosted on YouTube uh, that uh, we were able to display within our landing pages very easily. And we also have given a secondary call to action. Uh, it's a great use of a landing page. Rather than just saying thank you, uh, present some content of value, and then make another offer. And so in this case, we're trying to get people to sign up for our 60-day free trial. Or give us a call. You'll notice that when I touch on this uh, call button, uh, it actually highlights as if it is a hyper hyperlink. And that's because it is a hyperlink. If you were to hit this page on a mobile phone, we've got a little HTML tag that we've put on that that allows you to just touch it with your thumb, and it will launch the dialer on your phone. Uh, so it's a nice little feature kind of uh, under the covers there. Going back to the uh, edit campaign page, uh, as I mentioned, these are pages that are designed to capture anonymous traffic and uh, gather leads for people to begin a marketing process. They sit at the top of the funnel. Uh, typically, clients will deploy many, many of these all over the place, uh, many different types of campaigns. We talked about search engine uh, campaigns, about search engine marketing with pay-per-click. A lot of times, these are landing pages that are designed to sit in social media campaigns as well. So in Twitter and Facebook and uh, LinkedIn, et cetera. Uh, there are also campaigns that can be used for offline purposes. And so because we have an ability to structure URLs in a very friendly way, you could print one of these URLs in a, uh, a print ad. And people can type that in. 
or you can generate a QR code that can drive people to a landing page. Uh, we're, we're seeing uh, QR codes uh, coming back into favor a little bit, uh, primarily for use in uh, retail situations, restaurants, uh, uh, particular places where people are mobile, they've got their phones with them, and they've got to wait. Having a QR code driving people to a page to watch a video on how to build uh, or how the chef is preparing a particular meal or how uh, to, to register for a VIP club at a retail uh, store is a great use of a QR code. <clears throat> the other thing we can do here is hop into uh, reporting. We'll quickly run through some of the reports uh, that are available for these campaigns. Uh, this is a, a basic summary report uh, showing uh, page views, opens, unique opens, conversions, et cetera, uh, and, and most active date. This can be broken down by the campaign, by the page, and then we can also do some segmentation. We didn't build any segments into uh, this particular campaign, so we can't use it here. Um, we also have a detail report that will show exactly who has responded to uh, which page. Uh, a web forms report will allow you to download uh, a listing of everybody that has filled out a form uh, for any campaign, and that can be done by page. So if you build a several page microsite with different forms, you can um, uh, distinguish your reporting accordingly. The questions report allows you to uh, jump into survey questions. So one of the things you can use BoyNet landing pages for is to create multi-page surveys. They can be mobile friendly, walk people through step by step. You can structure form survey questions and download the answer here. Uh, this is a uh, report that allows you to monitor a, uh, a set of or a campaign over a period of time. And so, let's grab a uh, campaign here. Grab a month. And you can see these are the days of the month when the particular campaign was active. Time period report lets you compare for any campaign or any page, levels of activity, one range of dates to another range of dates. A visits report will allow you to actually group campaigns together uh, to compare uh, the results of those campaigns against each other. Great. Huh. Campaign will, the clicks report will break down all of the click data for every link of every page of every campaign. And so we've got a significant amount of reports. The vast majority of them are easily exportable into Excel uh, for you to take and to modify and, and do anything you like with. So jumping back into campaigns, we talked about lead generation. Okay, so we've got pages and microsites out there gathering data, dropping them into lists. The next campaign type we call drip nurture campaigns. These are campaigns that are designed to send out emails over a period of time after particular actions have occurred. And the very common action is for somebody to join a list. And so um, we can maybe create a new campaign here. Give it a uh, name. Start nurturing lead. In this case, we'll say when a contact is added to a contact list. You can also kick off a campaign when somebody opens or clicks on an email from a different campaign, or if somebody opens or clicks on a pearl from a different campaign. So you can be running a direct mail campaign when people touch that landing page that is defined in the pearl, you can kick off an entire set of additional actions. 
we'll just use the basic one, a contact is added to a list. And so in this case, maybe we'll want to send out a, a, a thank you email immediately. They so send email to this contact using a template out of our library from Genesis Point.net for signing. Save a step. And then we're going to add a wait. So what will happen here is a wait. We will send out an email as soon as that form is filled out and a person is added to the contact list. And then two days later, we're going to take another step. Here, I can just send another email, very simply. Or I can say, you know what? If a person has clicked on the initial email that I sent, then I want to send those people this particular email. I can also say if a person has opened an email from a drip step, then send them a different piece of content. We have four different trigger types. Uh, the first one is just send email, which is what we did here. And you can have the most common use case here is have a series of, say, six to ten emails planned out for a three-week period or a four-week period, um, spaced out over a particular number of days or hours. Those emails are just will automatically go out on autopilot when people join lists. Uh, the, the next way is here. If somebody has taken an action from one of those steps, one of those other emails that were sent out, then you can kind of branch off and start sending them a different set of content. A third trigger here is a campaign trigger. And so, uh, similar to what we discussed at the beginning, when you start a, a drip campaign, you can also mid-campaign say, you know what, if a person in this campaign has also opened or clicked on an email or a pearl from a different campaign, then that's telling us that this person is much more interested. We need to send them this. It's a closing email, perhaps. And then the last uh, trigger is what we call variable logic. This is where we have some very simple but powerful uh, if-then statements that you can insert into the logic. So you can say, uh, depending upon what you have defined in your list, um, so I defined a field number one, if the answer was number one, free, if the answer is number two, engage. So if that field equals one, then we're going to send this contact maybe an offer for a free month of service. If this contact equals a two, then we're going to send them maybe an offer to have a call for a campaign consultation. So there's a lot of different ways you can go with this. Very powerful, but simple to use. We're trying to stick to the idea that you can build powerful campaigns using software that is easy to use. That's our core concept behind lightweight marketing automation. Hopefully, we're finding a great balance here in power and ease of use. So that's how the uh, drip nurture campaigns work. The next campaign type are what we call email campaigns. These are exactly how they sound. They are, a, um, uh, they are email blasts that go out to a particular list that you are maintaining in Boynet on a particular day with a subject line and a template that you've designed uh, either in the system or you've imported into the system. Uh, we've got some very strong email marketing capabilities. Uh, we are particularly strong in some of our deliverability infrastructure. 
And so we enable each of our clients to create a unique domain within our infrastructure so that uh, with, with some specific technical records uh, that are established with the domain provider that, pr that give our mail senders a high quality score from the email service providers. And so <clears throat> when you set up your account, uh, your live account, your free trial accounts are set up with a, a shared domain. When you do your, your live account, you set up specific DNS records for sending and tracking. And by doing that, you are telling the email service providers, yeah, this is not a spammer. I'm saying uh, who I am. I'm announcing it to the world of email service providers, and you can trust this source. The, the advantage of taking this extra step is that within the Boynet infrastructure, if somebody does become labeled a spammer and their domain gets shut down, it doesn't affect our other customers. So it's a really important point in today's email marketing world where there's so much email out there and so many people are getting labeled spammers. You've got to be, have an ability to protect yourself from sharing an infrastructure with another uh, organization that maybe has um, uh, a better chance of being uh, shut down by the email service providers. So back to the email campaigns. <clears throat> we have uh, some great email reporting. We can show the details of exactly who's opened and how often. We can hop into their contact records. We can jump into unique clicks bounces, unsubscribes, spam reports, and drops. You'll see that the number of bounces and uh, drops are fairly low here in our list. That's because we offer a very unique capability, what we call list cleaning. And so you've got an ability to take a list that you upload into BoyNet and then run it through several different checks to make sure that you're using valid email addresses. That's another way that we enable our customers to protect themselves or to protect uh, themselves from others. By using this cleaning technology, we're able to keep your bounce rates very low. The hard bounce rate is the second most important component in determining how the ESPs rate you, Spammers, uh, spam reports being number one. Uh, if your bounce rate is below 5%, you're in good shape. When you start getting up in the 5% range or higher, then people are then the email service providers are thinking, well, we've got some pretty low quality lists that are being used here. We're going to start sending those messages from this domain to the spam folder. And the last kind of really cool feature I'm going to show you in email campaigns are what we call campaign drips. Campaign drips enable you to take a segment out an email blast for further emailing, depending upon the actions that have occurred from that original email. And so for this holiday email campaign, I can say, you know what? I'm gonna send out a second blast to everybody that didn't open the original email I'm going to schedule it for tomorrow, say 12 p.m., and I'm going to use the same template. But they didn't open up my original email, so I'm going to switch up the subject line. Maybe I'll grab their first name and last name and use that in the subject line. Maybe I'll grab their last purchase date, which perhaps I've, I've mapped to a variable data field. And so by switching up the subject line on subsequent campaign drips, you're able to drive more opens, more clicks, et cetera. Your other segments that you can set up on these campaign drips include people who have opened but did not click. Maybe you send them a revised offer, a different template. And then the final one is open the email and clicked. So these are people that obviously you've engaged with and you want to send some sort of follow-up communication to. 
So you can schedule out as many of these drips as you want for each email campaign. So it's a very powerful capability we offer here. The last campaign type is what we call personalized campaign. Personalized campaigns include a list, they include a landing page or microsite, and then they, they can include more than one channel to drive people to a personal URL, which is what we generate when we merge a list with a landing page. And so <clears throat> uh, I'll jump into an existing um, actually finished. We'll do this one here. So this is a, um, a personalized campaign using a contact list that was uploaded, merging it with a template to create a unique URL for each person on the list. Once VoidNet will generate all of these pages for you, so we have a list of 50,000 We'll create 50,000 unique pages that we can track individually. And here's where your marketing can get really powerful. You can use a downloaded list of personal URLs to go into a direct mail piece that drive people to the page. You can use email to drive people to the page, and we automatically will map the links from the email directly to each person's personal URL. You don't have to do any custom coding. You can also, for people who have opted in, you can set up text messaging campaigns. And so channels are what drive people to these personal URLs. We'll just jump on one and take a look at it. So as you can see here, uh, the, we use a subdomain of BoyNet for this campaign. Um, we've labeled it June 24th webinar. And then Adam Barlow has a specific page. Uh, because we know something about Adam, we're actually able to pre-fill the form. This, this is a form that was dedicated to a uh, landing page direct mail webinar. <clears throat> so uh, we talked about the fact that you can download a, a data file and ship it off to a printer for direct mail run. Uh, the, any variable data printer can take these files, merge it in with the creative, and then have each personal URL print on each direct mail piece. Same thing with QR codes. You can generate a QR code for each person on the list and merge it with a print run. You um, can also send out emails to people, whether they depending upon their behavior. And so in this case, for this webinar, we sent out a last chance drip to people who had not visited their personal URL yet with a last chance email. That was on 624 and 620. We sent a email out to people who had opened but had not completed the form, asking them again to sign up and then we also sent out on 619 a drip to the non-visitors. So it's very simple, very fast to keep track of who's responded to your offer and then quickly segment based on a given date and time uh, people into these various segmentation buckets and then blast out additional emails to them. We're going to be rolling out some additional direct mail integration in 2015 that we're very excited about. So you'll actually be able to segment people from within a campaign and send them postcards uh, from directly within BoyNet. Uh, so we're looking forward to introducing that here in the first half of 2015. So those are the four campaign types. Uh, uh, by walking through them, it uh, forces us to sort of deal with a lot of the basic concepts behind BoyNet. Um, next, we will jump into the templates section. Uh, and, and here's where the creative work is done within BoyNet. Uh, you end up building a template library, 
which is a listing of templates, page templates, email templates, or SMS templates. And once you've built your library, you can obviously preview from a desktop perspective, from a mobile phone perspective, and a tablet perspective, what these pages look like. You'll notice that the images and the content are being rearranged based on the size of the screen because the templates that are built within BoyNet are all what we call responsive design, meaning they sense the size of the screen and then they automatically rearrange the content to be optimized for that screen. This enables you to build one page or one email and not have to worry about coding specifically for mobile devices. We'll walk through creating a new template first. We've got a step-by-step -step template builder. In this case, we're gonna start with a page template and we'll just grab a basic structure of a page and then start editing. Within BoyNet, we give a, an ability to structure um, a full content management system uh, we call the Asset Manager. And the Asset Manager gives you an ability to upload the creative images, fonts, style sheets, anything else that you're going to use in your templates, and then structure a folder system to keep track of everything, and reuse these assets across all of your different campaigns. I'm gonna grab, let's say I'm gonna replace that image that was there at the, at, at the top, that particular image. Once, obviously not a great fit. I can change the color, I can delete, I can move, I can take this block of the, of the template and move it around any way that I like. Next, we'll show sort of the basic editing capability. So uh, you've got here for this particular block where you define uh, the heading, the font, the size, color, uh, bullets, special characters, tables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basic editing stuff. I'll just say, in this case, I'm going to type hello and. If we're going to map this to a list, I can start pulling in data from the list into my landing page. I'm going to say here, hello, first name. And then for each person, when they view their page, they're going to see their first name displayed, whatever data I had there on the list. This is what we call variable data. We've got a whole bunch of standard variable data fields. And then we also have 35 user-defined variable data fields that you can map any data to. So if you've got purchase data or membership data or home ownership data or uh, age or sex or any other type of basic information that you want to use within a campaign, you can map those fields to BoyNet and then use that data explicitly, like we do here, saying hello, first name, um, keep going, um, thank you for your order on variable data one. Let's say that we had a, in our list from our point of sale system, their most recent purchase date. So you can use this explicit data any way you like, or, and you can take that data and use that variable logic that we touched on earlier. And so you can say, all right, um, if variable data one, which was the most recent order date, is less than or equal to, we'll say, four, one, 
2014. Then display this content. We'd love to give you a special offer. And so only the people in the list whose last purchase date was earlier than 4-1-2014 see that particular message. I was able to make a very specific custom landing page for this particular contact without having to do any coding, just some very basic if-then logic. I can also include in these statements visual images. So I can say, all right, for everybody um, who meets that particular condition, they're going to get this image. Could be a product, could be uh, an offer that's been turned into an image, could be anything. You can also include links only to certain components of your list or certain segments of your list. So I could have a page that I'm giving uh, VIP members access to that is going to be hanging on a landing page. There's a million things you can do here with variable logic. Very powerful. A couple other important components of the page editor. And by the way, everything I've shown here so far is applicable in a page template as well as an email template. So you can use for email campaigns all of this personalization within our template editor. Uh, we can create buttons easily, insert forms. These are obviously um, not for email, but for pages only. Um, <clears throat> we can drop leads directly into salesforce.com, and we are rolling out a series of uh, an entire architecture that will support many, many other uh, CRM systems. So if you've got forms that you're building and you want that information to drop directly into a CRM system, uh, you'll be able to enter some basic information, and when the form gets filled, it's living in BoyNet, it's doing its thing, and it's also touching, in this case, Salesforce. We can set up a what we call thank you page redirect. So if you remember back to the first landing page that we filled out, we were directed to a second page. That's done very quickly and easily here. And then finally, we can set up email autoresponders. So if you just want to send out a quick email thanking some, somebody for filling out a form rather than doing an entire drip campaign, you can do that here. So this is where the creative work occurs within BoyNet. Uh, the last thing I'll mention for uh, those agencies and individuals with more technical skills, you can get right at the source code within BoyNet. Uh, unlike a lot of other page editors and email template editors, you've got full source code access here. So uh, you can edit source code of templates that you create. You can also import HTML directly by entering, by creating a blank template and then just copying and pasting HTML in. You can also import from other websites. So if you see a page that you like and you want to um, import that, you can input the URL and we'll suck in the HTML for you to go to work in. So lots of flexibility for more technically advanced users within our template editor. But still easy to use, easy to bang out, powerful templates without getting into custom HTML work. Last, we're going to jump into list management. And uh, we talked a little bit about the um, ability for us to clean lists uh, when, when you import them. We'll just walk through a quick import process just so you can see how it works.
And once you've done the basic import, you run through a mapping process. You can map only the fields that you want to map. It's completely up to you how you do it. And as I mentioned before, you can map the standard fields that we've offered and as well as the custom fields, we call variable data fields. Once you've done that, create the list. And you can see we've uploaded test list 11. You can see that it's been tagged as uh, not cleaned. Those that have a check mark have gone through our cleaning process. Here's the data that I just uploaded. I want to clean the list, click the clean button, and the complete clean is something that will essentially go out and uh, attempt to uh, do a handshake with the SMTP server of each email address that is in your list that you're cleaning. And so this is a bit of a lengthy process for long lists. It can take a little bit of time. We recommend for lists of 25,000 or more to run it overnight. Um, a quick clean will go through a simple process that doesn't require us to go out over the internet. So that's the list management. You can have as many lists as you like. And once you've got them, uh, you can append them clean we talked about. You can also download to a CSV file for manipulation, deletion, you know, do whatever you want with them. So that's sort of the, the basic BoingNet interface. Uh, what the, the last part that I'd like to show you is our agency edition, which has a slightly different interface. Same concepts, works a little bit differently. So this is the BoingNet agency edition home screen. And what you'll see here is uh, a slightly different interface. Uh, keeps track of your plan information here. Allows you to upload a logo for use in the reporting portal that you see listed here. Uh, so the name of this agency is Dennis 2 Agency. And it also allows you to set up what we call sub-accounts. And these are your clients that you run campaigns for. And so <clears throat> I've set up agency client number two here. I hop into the manage button. And uh, essentially what uh, we will see is a home page for this particular agency client. This is where you do your work for that client. You run through the exact same thing we just did. You do the list management. You do the templates, you build campaigns, you run the campaigns for your clients. Your clients, you distribute your reporting portal domain to. And so in this case, it's Dennis 2 Agency. And as you can see, there's no BoingNet branding on this portal. Load up. To agency. I do I want to put in agency client number two? is the login for the particular client. So they log in, they get to see their reports, the, the campaigns that you've built for them. And they're getting real-time access to their data for the campaigns that you run and they know nothing about BoingNet. 
So that's the, uh, the, the, the basic idea behind the agency edition. You hop back and forth between the agency home and your various client accounts, run campaigns, do the creative, use your strategy, use your execution capabilities, give your clients access to data whenever they want it, and you charge them whatever you like for your services. Um, and so that's the, the basic rundown of Boynet. Uh, we talked about today the four different campaign types, the creative, the list management that is inherent within all of the um, different editions of Boynet, and then we did a quick overview of the agency edition. Um, if anybody has any questions right now, feel free to speak up or use the chat line. Uh, if not, then uh, we'll have Chaz follow up with everybody after the meeting, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, doesn't appear to be any questions, so uh, I want to thank everybody today for joining us and uh, appreciate your interest in Boynet. Uh, Chaz will reach out after the meeting here, and uh, we'll follow up with everybody. And I uh, hope everybody has a great new year, and we'll look forward to talking again soon. Thank you.